So people will feel like they can't use their left posterior chain, but really what's happening is they probably have one aspect of that that's a little bit too active and one aspect of that that is not active enough. Hi, my name is Greg Chaplin. I'm a physical therapist and strength conditioning specialist. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to use hamstring exercises to correct a lateral pelvic tilt. So if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So first of all, what is a lateral pelvic tilt? So when we look at the relationship between the rib cage and the pelvis, what we consider a lateral pelvic tilt would be when one side is hiked up. So in this case, we have this left lateral pelvic tilt. You could say that there's a lateral pelvic tilt on the right side as well, or vice versa. And so what we usually have going on here is actually some oblique rotation of the pelvis towards one side. And then we have this appearance of one side being higher than the other. And we could have that on the left or the right. Uh, and they're a little bit different when they are the left or the right. So in this case, I'm talking about the person who's got this left lateral pelvic tilt where it appears as though that left side is higher than the right. But what's really going on is there's actually a shift of the entire pelvis. So this uh, sacrum is looking to the right. The pant zipper is a little bit more oriented to the right. And so um, this, in this particular case, what you might see is that when we go to move this hip uh, to cross over into this externally rotated position, we can't do that as easily uh, as we can on the right side. And it might feel as though that this hip is somewhat back relative to the right side. But usually what that is, is on this back of this left side, we have so much activity in the muscles on this back side of the rib cage in the back all the way down through the sacrum that the upper body gets pushed forward a little bit more than the lower body. And so it looks like this hip is back, but it's not really back. It's actually getting pushed forward by this activity here. Okay, and then why do we care about a hamstring to fix that? So when we look at this back side of the body, if we had the back muscles that went all the way down here uh, and those continued down on kind of the other end of the pelvis, starting here is the hamstring. So this would be considered a chain of muscles. People will refer to this as the posterior chain here. And so if you have what appears to be a dysfunction of one side, one side of the posterior chain, you know you're dealing with some bit of an orientation issue. Now, because this is a chain, this is gonna work together. So the this part is going to support the uh, backside from about the pelvis up and the hamstring and some of the other muscles like the glutes are gonna help support from, let's say, this level down. And so when you have one side that's working really hard, like we just discussed in some of these back muscles, you're often gonna have a tough time using what's below it because you can only have so much tension distributed throughout that chain. So people will feel like they can't use their left posterior chain, but really what's happening is they probably have one aspect of that that's a little bit too active and one aspect of that that is not active enough. So when we're designing an exercise, we can actually use some of this left hamstring musculature to help balance out what's going on above it. And in any exercise we do in this case, the way we're gonna to wanna to start is by putting this in a position where it can actually reduce the amount of activity. And then we wanna put this in a position where we can increase the amount of activity. So we're gonna go through a progression of hamstring exercises to get the hamstrings to activate here a little bit without using the back. And so with all these activities, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see the uh, rib cage in the back here resting down on a surface. And we're gonna be lifting this tailbone a little bit by using the hamstring musculature here and keeping the leg fixed. So the leg's gonna be fixed and we're gonna get a little bit of this posterior tip of the pelvis as the back then flattens right out against the support surface. So we're gonna go through this little hamstring bridge progression all the way from easiest uh, to most difficult. And then from here, to be a jumping off point to get a little more awareness of that hamstring. Then you integrate that more into your gym exercises. So here we go with the first variation. This is a 90-90 position hamstring bridge. So for this exercise, you're gonna put your feet on the wall. Here we are. And then you're gonna dig down with your heels. So you're almost trying to pull the wall down 
with the friction of your shoe against the wall. As you do this, this hip is going to lift up so the tailbone kind of tucks up. As that happens, the back is gonna be able to lay nice and flat on the table. Now you should already begin to feel the hamstring engage in this position. And if you're not feeling the hamstring engage in this position, you wanna make sure that you can feel that whole left side of your back right down against the table, okay? If you're still not feeling it, you want to make sure you're not pushing into the wall with your feet, but you're digging straight down, almost imagining there's a shelf right here below your heel, and you're digging down into that shelf and letting that tailbone just lift up a little bit. You should begin to feel some, some gentle hamstring activity there. Now, if this is a one-sided issue, like it usually is, what you're gonna wanna do is then leave that side on the wall. So this left side, you're gonna leave it on the wall. You're gonna keep that feeling of digging down, and then you could just do gentle lifting off and back to the wall, keeping the back nice and flat against the table, keeping somewhat of this posterior tip by elevating the tailbone and continuing to dig down through the heels. In terms of the breathing sequence here, we would inhale off, exhale down, inhale off, exhale down. Now that variation is going to be the easiest because we leverage the wall to make the posterior tip very easy and make it easy for the back to stay down on the table. Now, as a progression from that, we wanna actually bring the feet down to challenge our ability to use those hamstrings, uh, but also to keep the back off. And it's gonna be a little harder to keep the back off in this uh, progression. And with each subsequent progression, it's gonna become even more difficult not to utilize that, that back, back musculature that we've already been utilizing. For our next progression, we're gonna again do that bridging, but we're gonna put something under the feet. So this is about a three inch block. Again, we're gonna think about digging down into that block with the heels. If you need to, you could lift the toes up. So you dig down just with the heels, just to get the feel of it. But eventually you're gonna to wanna to flatten out the feet at least a little bit. So you're digging down with those heels. You're gonna let the butt come up a little bit, just a tiny tilt, but the back stays flat here. Now in this position again, you do a couple breaths, make sure you have that back down. And then as a progression, you could work this march here. Inhaling, exhaling down. You're still pulling with that left heel. The left side of the back is still on the table. Okay, now to progress further from this, you would simply just remove the block and now you're gonna be completely flat. Now, once we have a good awareness of that, what we wanna do is we wanna take care of what's going on up top, right? So we mentioned that probably this whole area all the way from here to here is somewhat overutilized, is somewhat stiff. So what we have to practice is, we have to practice shifting that back. We have this hamstring engaged so that we can have a yielding action of this musculature on the back side. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna add a little bit of an arm reach here, first with the right arm, then with the left arm. As we reach across with that right arm, it's gonna turn the body this way, so that left side of the back can be able to rest really, really easily. And we're gonna feel maybe some abdominal engagement here on the side abdominals, but gentle, not aggressive. So that's gonna look a little bit like this. Again, we dig down with the heels, we elevate the butt. Our back is still resting flat. And we're gonna inhale. As we exhale, we can reach up with this right hand which is gonna turn us somewhat this side. We should feel maybe on that left side, the abdominals engage a little bit. Again, we're gonna inhale, reach up a little bit higher. Now we feel the left side of the back settle down as we continue to dig with the heels. Now, if you're having trouble keeping the heels digging in and you're having trouble keeping that hamstring active, you're gonna bring back in the block. We're gonna bring in, again, the wall to make that a little bit easier. So you could be here. Inhale, exhale, reach, feeling that side in the abdominals, activate and the back just sink right down into the table. Now, once you have that, you can go over to the left arm here and do the same thing. So again, we're digging with the heels, the butt's still a little bit lifted here at the tailbone, but the back is staying nice and flat. We inhale and then we exhale. 
reaching up with the arm, but in this case, we're gonna keep that left side of the back down. So we're not trying to get the same rotation of the rib cage to the other side. In this case, we're actually trying to keep that area in between the shoulder blade and the spine down on the table. So we're gonna breathe in. We'll feel that expand down into the table. Then we're gonna exhale as we reach. Hopefully again, feeling a little bit of abdominal activation on that side, but most importantly, keeping the back nice and flat. Okay, and then we're gonna go through that progression again. Inhale, reach. Now, if we wanna make this really uh, targeted towards a more asymmetrical presentation, which is likely what we have anyways, we can then lift this right knee off and hold it here while we do the same thing. So we're gonna inhale, exhale and reach up. Again, trying to keep that whole left side down. So once we can go through those progressions with relative ease, then we can take those same exercises and we can add a kettlebell to the hand uh, to do a little bit more of a reach, which is gonna, again, give us a little bit more of this activation here. Then we can slowly progress up to more of the squatting and split stance type variations. And we're gonna be very judicious about our hinging variations because we want to make sure that we're able to kind of let this area lengthen out as we contract uh, more of that hamstring at first. Once that hamstring is somewhat more active, we're gonna have an easier time kicking on stuff like the glutes. At that point, hopefully, we're finding that that hip external rotation has opened up a little bit more. Uh, and then at that point, we can start to progress back towards more of those hinge type activities. So I hope that made sense. If you have any questions about that or if you're having difficulty, leave a little comment below and uh, I'll answer your questions there in the comments. If you have a topic you want me to cover in an upcoming video, please let me know. And until the next one, thanks a lot for watching and peace.